Captain Midnight. This week's video is brought to you by Audible. Go to my link audible.com slash midnight in the video description or text midnight to 500, 500 to get a free book and a 30 day free trial. And stick around for the end of the video to hear about my favorite book about Marvel ever. By the way, this video also contains full spoilers for Infinity War. If you watched my video last week, you know that I enjoyed Infinity War quite a bit. It's funny, filled with great character moments, features one of the series' best villains, and pushes the MCU into a really interesting new direction. But today, I want to focus on the one segment of the film that left me feeling a little flat. And it's not because I want to focus on the negative, it's because I can't stop thinking about it, trying to dissect exactly why this sequence didn't work for me, especially when all the ingredients were there. And as you can probably tell from the title, the segment I'm referring to is the film's biggest battle, the siege on Wakanda. So in this video, I'm going to try to go over the battle in detail and talk about what worked and what didn't. Captain America and the Incredible Hulk, both with flyaway action pack, each sold separately by Mego. So, I'm gonna start with a compliment. As the heroes line up and prepare for the attack, Proxima Midnight releases the Outriders. For those of you who've watched a lot of my videos, you know that I usually have a bone to pick with disposable alien armies in superhero movies, like the Jatari in the first Avengers. I think it's kind of the laziest way to build a massive, large-scale superhero battle. But Infinity War doesn't shy away from this, instead making this disposability the key characteristic of the Outriders. Our heroes watch in horror as the aliens throw and hurl themselves at Wakanda's barrier, slicing themselves in half in the process. It's kind of a clever way to lampshade the issue. By acknowledging that the Outriders are so unimportant that they're willing to kill themselves at the drop of a hat, the movie uses their disposability to its advantage. But okay, let me ask you this. What's the best part of the big Wakanda battle? Some of you may say when Thor makes his grand entrance or when Proxima Midnight gets killed, but I bet most would say that things really get good when Thanos shows up. And there's a very good reason for that, I think, because it's also the moment the Wakanda battle begins to feel like it has actual stakes. But let me back up and talk about the battle itself. The goal of Thanos' Black Order and the Outriders is pretty simple. Vision has a stone in his head. He's in Wakanda, so they need to break through Wakanda's defenses and take it. Infinity Stone aside, this is a pretty basic setup for a great siege sequence. All the ingredients are in place, but you're missing the tone needed to really pull it off. Take the Battle of Helm's Deep, probably one of the best battle sequences ever in a blockbuster movie. Now I realize that comparing the two isn't completely fair. For one thing, Helm's Deep is a much longer segment of two towers, clocking in at a whopping 38 minutes. Now I wasn't holding the timer in the theater for Infinity War, but it definitely feels like a much smaller part of the film than that. But I still think there's a lot of things, big and small, that Infinity War could have learned from these scenes. For one thing, let's compare the buildup. Wakanda's civilians are evacuated by the time the battle starts, meaning it's free to act as kind of a total battle playground instead of as people's home. This is a place that didn't go looking for war, but war has shown up at their doorstep. And that's a terrifying prospect when you really think about it. Like last week they were just going about their day, and today their entire civilization is about to get attacked by these crazy monsters. That would obviously be horrible. But the movie shies away from giving us that perspective, and instead it just has a quick line about everyone being evacuated, clearing the stage for simple superhero action. Contrast that with Helm's Deep, which goes out of its way to sell the audience on the human cost of this conflict. Even going so far as to introduce a character that kind of acts as a grounded everyman. An innocent young kid whose life could be lost in battle. That's a perspective I think the Wakanda battle is really missing. Like remember near the beginning of the film where Iron Man and Doctor Strange are talking about Thanos showing up, but before they have any time to prepare, the Black Order just does? That was exciting, and it immediately raised the stakes. I think something like that would have really helped here too. If they didn't have time to evacuate civilians, the battle would have felt much more urgent and much more human. At Tony Stark's main research and production plant, it's just an ordinary workday. Until... Look out! Speaking of stakes, let's talk about them. In Infinity War, the stakes are incredibly high. If Thanos gets this stone, well, I mean, I don't have to tell you, you saw the movie. But I'm not sure the battle scenes really do enough to make those stakes feel real or immediate. 
Like, remember those giant saw-like machines that the Black Order uses? You know, the ones that the Scarlet Witch ends up dropping on everyone's heads? Those are legitimately terrifying creations. They're giant rotating saws on the battlefield. That imagery enough could build so much suspense and dread. But instead, they're kind of just used for a quick, and admittedly very funny, gag where Proxima Midnight gets killed. And that's kind of it. Our heroes don't seem too worried about them, and we get no sense of how the average Wakandan warrior feels about them either. They roll in, get destroyed, and they're gone. It just seems like a missed opportunity. Again, looking to the two towers, you really feel the dread in almost every move the Urukai army makes. The simple act of them slamming their spears against the ground fills you with more dread than anything the Black Order does in Wakanda. And I think that's kind of a problem. The structure of the battle is also kind of an issue, especially before Thor shows up, because again, I don't feel like the stakes are as present as they should be. We get the basic struggle. The bad guys are over here, and they want to get to Vision's shiny yellow forehead stone over here. And that's basically it. What Lord of the Rings did so well is that the situation that the two armies were in were a little more complicated than that. Yes, yeah, Saruman's forces just wanted to kill everyone inside, again, simple, but to do that they had to get past the walls or get over a narrow bridge. And that provided a ton of tension, as Aragorn and the gang seemed to have things handled, then, you know, this happened. <laughs> a perfectly paced sequence of rising and falling action. Infinity War could have done something similar to this. After all, Wakanda has a big dome that kind of acts as a defensive wall. But they do away with that almost right away. Now to be fair, the movie comes up with a perfectly good reason why T'Challa decides to open a section of it. He wants to keep the uh, Rick and Morty Gazorpazorps in front of the army. But it feels like such a missed opportunity, since the dome falling could have been such a suspenseful moment. But they dispense with it immediately in favor of getting straight to the punching. And after that, it's basically just a free-for-all, not much interesting variety or tactics to the types of fighting going on. There's a few people flying Flying, but almost everyone else is just doing the exact same thing, charging straight forward. I don't look to superhero movies to have really interesting battle tactics or anything, but the heroes don't really have a plan beyond, hey, let's just go out there and punch and shoot them in the face. Which is fine, but some fun gamble or twist would have been interesting. And maybe the plan could fail, so just when it looks like all hope is lost, that's when Thor shows up. Just something to give the fight a more distinctive feeling. They do try to play up the fact that the Outriders are overwhelming the heroes before Thor gets there. Like they literally have Bruce Banner shout, there's too many of them. And I don't know, points for trying, but come on, it could have been so much more visceral than that. It's a moment where the movie needs to show more and tell less. Show us Wakandan soldiers dying or fleeing. Give us some sort of memorable death in that moment. Sell us on how bad things look. As it is, it just kind of comes off as a small bump in the road. Back in the town with the power of a bull. Ain't no monster clown who is that lovable. Now I can see a lot of people saying that I'm doing Infinity War a disservice by comparing the two because the tones are different. Helm's Deep is all dark and serious. Marvel movies are lighter and more fun. But I'm not so sure. For one thing, the Helm's Deep segment, for all its suspense and dread, contains a lot of humor too. Like there's literally a dwarf tossing joke right before one of the most dangerous moves the main characters try out. Toss me. What? and it balances those tones really well. Also, Infinity War isn't the lightest movie either. It's funny, but it's obviously not purely comedic. I mean, especially considering its ending. So I really think they could have had a little more tension and weight to the drama of its battle, and it wouldn't have felt out of place at all. Now to be clear, I really think things pick up once Thanos enters the fray, leading to the movie's haunting final few minutes. I think that stuff is great. But I do think the Wakanda battle itself was kind of a dropped ball in an otherwise very solid movie, where the two towers follows its characters through very well-defined stages of the battle, the wall, to the ground, to the bridge, to the keep, 
We watch as things get more and more desperate, before finally Gandalf shows up and saves the day. You don't really get that structure before Thor or Thanos shows up, it just kind of feels more like CG mayhem for mayhem's sake. So while I really enjoyed watching the Guardians, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and everyone else in their other storylines in this very vast and ambitious movie, I feel like Cap's crew and the Wakandans kind of got the short end of the stick here. Here's hoping that's corrected in Avengers 4. So when I was asked if I'd like to work with Audible, I was thrilled because it gave me a great reason to talk about the audiobook that probably had the single greatest impact on this channel. Marvel Comics The Untold Story by Sean Howe. I've actually been an Audible subscriber for a really long time, and a few summers ago I listened to this book on a really long road trip, and I gotta say it just blew me away. It's the history of Marvel presented in a way that's really fun to listen to, well researched, and full of interesting stuff you probably didn't know. Like this covers everything from Stan Lee's early days as an assistant to the formation of Marvel Studios. Honestly it's the best, and I think Audible is the best way to experience it. Not only do they have the largest collection collection of audiobooks in the world. The best part is that by subscribing, you won't just get a free audiobook right now, you'll also get a credit for a new audiobook every single month. And even beyond that, there's always really great sales going on. And if you try one out and you're just not that into it, no big deal, you can just swap it out. And unlike a streaming service or a library, these are audiobooks that you totally own, not just a short rental. So if you're doing some hiking or hanging out at the beach or, you know, whatever you get up to during the summer, Audible is a perfect companion for it. If you want to get Marvel The Untold Story, go to audible.com slash midnight by clicking on it in the description or pinned comment, or text midnight to 500 500. Either way, you'll get to listen to a free audiobook right away. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.